What's going on guys? A little windy today, so hopefully you can hear me properly. But, finally got the weather to cooperate with me. After weeks of Pennsylvania boycotting warm weather, looks like we finally got it. Will it stay? Who the hell knows? Uh, the important thing is, finally able to get out here and finally able to film a video with that. Though, I posted a video probably like a week after I got this thing. Just going over like a little details, like pretty much it was a first impression video. And I've had it for about four months now. I bought it in December, I think. It was actually December 15th I bought it, so it'll be four months exactly in a couple weeks. But um, I need content. So as far as you're concerned, it's been four months. But in the four months of being my daily driver, I have discovered many things that I like and a couple things mostly specific to my car that piss me off a little bit. So in this video, I'm gonna be just going over basically my likes, dislikes, just essentially reporting back on four months of Miata ownership. So, first and foremost, I, I love the design of this car. It's a very sleek, pretty basic, nothing really over the top. Not, it's a non-offensive design. And I imagine that this thing was probably quite a head turner back in 1989 when this thing first came out, considering the fact that the majority of the car market back in the 80s was mostly just boxy, like, mostly boring looking cars. I mean, nothing wrong with boxy cars at all. Like, the Hachiroku, like S13, all those cars, my Civic, I think they look great. Just, let's be honest, the majority of the boxy cars in the 80s were just not really that pretty to look at. Like a, I don't know, a Dodge Omni or something, for example. But, I imagine it was probably quite refreshing seeing a car with smooth lines and just an overall sleeker design than most of what the 80s had to offer. And a lot of people probably didn't really know any better back then. They expect, they just kind of thought that's what cars looked like. So when they saw this thing, they were probably just like, whoa, that's different. So yeah, first thing I like about it, love the design. I have always liked the design ever since I was a child. So next up, let's move on to the interior. Also, for some reason, I really love the way the door sounds when you open it. I don't know, it's just satisfying to me. So, the interior is very basic and it's just very well well laid out. Everything is within reach. Like you don't really feel you don't feel claustrophobic in this car at all. Like which just surprised me because looking at this thing and seeing how small it is, I would think that you'd get in it and you'd feel like you're trapped in like a little pod. Now that's probably subjective to some people because I'm five seven now. I'm sure someone who's like six foot five would probably have a bit of a different experience that they got in this car. But for me, it's really nice. Like I like I like how open it feels. Like I don't feel trapped in here whatsoever. As opposed to even something like my um, my Audi. Like that that interior felt claustrophobic. All we did in fact a more interior crash reinforcement. This probably has acceptable crash reinforcement, but whatever. It's a really nice, simple, comfortable place to be. You got center console right there, tiny. Uh, this is where your cup holders would be, but they are useless because they're designed to fit Japanese drinks. So this is just a little spot where you can like, you know, it's like your phone fits in there pretty nice. You can put other miscellaneous stuff in here. Have this partial shelf in the back. I found this to be super useful. Now, oh, and Miatas are not exactly known for having first house storage. So it's nice that they put this little thing back here. You can store a couple extra items that maybe you couldn't fit in the trunk or just don't feel like putting in the trunk. But nice to have. And for the top down, you can still be used, which I didn't know. Didn't think that was gonna be the case when I first bought this car, but it's nice that it is. It does have some scuffs on the dash, but I'll take care of that at some point. Gauges are simple and tell you what you need to know. I really like that I have an oil pressure gauge. So if something goes wrong with the lubrication system, which I have a history of happening to me in German cars, not Japanese cars, I will see it and getting past me this time. Although I don't expect anything to go wrong because I don't want to jinx it, but this has been the most reliable car I've ever owned. So moving on. 
Also forgot to mention, I really like the interior of this car with like tan accents, the British racing green, like perfectly. Like normally I'm not a fan of tan interiors, but with this, like the whole British retro style seat going on here, this is one of the exceptions. If the colors didn't accent go so well, I would make the entire interior black probably, but I'm gonna keep this theme going, I think. The seats are also very nice, very comfortable. They hug you in pretty well. I've never had to hang on to the wheel for dear life when taking a quarter in this car. I'm gonna replace them eventually just for something in better condition, maybe Cobra seats or something like that. Um, I haven't really made a decision yet, but for now, they do just fine. Also, these speakers on the back had rest, they're, they're pretty nice to have. Not those ones though, those, those, those need to be repaired. And trunk space is, for me, really not an issue. I moved a couple things back here to get it out of the interior for the video. But I put my equipment in here. I've taken my equipment like other places like I did now. I mean, this isn't everything. Like, I go shopping, I don't do like hardcore grocery shopping, I only buy food for myself. So I have never even come close to having an issue with storage in this car, surprisingly. I have a nice big open space to put larger things in there, you don't have to like fumble around the edges of it and try to shove things in there. Goes in, can't really see it probably, but it does go in a little bit deeper in the corners. Probably want to avoid putting stuff there though. Uh, if I took out the spare tire, that would probably free up a lot of space, which I will probably do at some point, because it's probably the original, it's probably dry rotted or something. But other than that, trunk space is usable for me anyway. Maybe not someone with like a five kid family, but for me it works. Alright, so there's a few more things to talk about that I really enjoy about this car once you get to the small driving portion. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time today to take it on the back room and really show you what's capable of, capable of or just a stock Miata. But um, let's move on to things that kind of piss me off about it. Now, this just makes me upset more than pisses me off because obviously it's, it's no one's fault. It's just Pennsylvania being Pennsylvania. The paint is chipping, if you can see it, really bad on the hood and the side fender. Like. I think, I'm pretty sure the previous owner kept this thing like under a cover, like in a garage, because it was nowhere near this bad when I bought it. It just gradually got worse over the winter. There's actually one particular time where my soul just shattered. I was at work and it was snowing. Well, it started snowing, and by the time that had come out, my car was pretty much covered. And I went to go scrape the snow off the hood with um, the snow scraper. And along with the snow, I just saw the paint chips just fly away in the wind. And I was just like, oh my god. So, yeah, once it gets warmer, permanently warmer, I'll have to fix that. And this, this just makes me upset, doesn't really piss me off, I gotta fix this. Um, I'm probably just gonna take out the speakers because they're not connected to anything and just, just like Velcro or glue it or something. Moving on, what used to piss me off, what doesn't really piss me off anymore because I figured it out, putting the top up. Let me show you how you do this from a perspective where I can actually show you, so. This ain't gonna work, it's gonna go on the trunk. Put the top up. I think it would be light, but it's not. Gotta unclip these Johnnies. Grab it by the handle in the middle. Just lift it up. Uh, hang on, just weak. Probably that. And uh, push the back window out a little bit. And then. Let me show you the part that pissed me off when I first got this car. I pretty much got it figured out, but when I was first like put the top down, you really can't see anything. I was having such a hard time like holding the roof and then getting the uh, clips in, but I'm gonna have to put the camera down for this. You need to like pull pull it over the tab and then just push it down, and it's the same thing uh, with the other side. That was pro it was probably just hard because it was cold out and every all the metals and stuff were just sticky. But yeah, it's more so the fact that I'm just jealous of other Miata owners like my friends NC and like pretty much everything in that era. And I think even most of the NA Miatas, you could just one-hand it, throw the thing down and throw it back up. 
Me, I gotta get out, pull it up, clip it. It's a process, but whatever. Speaking of the roof, let me show you literally the worst thing that has gone wrong with this car since I've owned it. We had the first snowstorm of the season. I didn't have um, a top cover, which if you have me on it, honestly, any convertible, I would 100% recommend getting a top cover. So it snowed on the car and the snow weighed down on the back window and it ripped right here. We JB welded it and then that didn't last. And then it, we had a huge rainstorm one time and then this entire bottom section just completely disconnected from the top so we had the gorilla glue and the result is no more holes in the back window but it now looks like a schnauzer barfed on the back window so I'm gonna replace the entire top at some point so I'm just gonna let that let that be as much as an eyesore as it is and then the back window itself just pisses me off like when I get a new top I'm gonna make sure that it's a glass window because Ice, like frost, just sticks to this thing. It's extremely hard to get off, and you need to be really meticulous with it because if you're using too much force for the nice scraper, you could rip the, the liner side of it. And then it just gets dirty really easily. It's kind of hard to see out of. Like, if you're driving in front of someone and they have their high beams on, which everyone in Bristol does, every no one turns their high beams off ever. And since this is a low car, the glare is going to fill up your entire rear mirror. And one more problem specifically for the Pennsylvanian resident or anyone up northeast is that this car does not leak. This car has never leaked on me. I've never seen water dripping in from anywhere that it shouldn't be. The condensation build up in this car is crazy and it is extremely hard to get under control. Like I will defog the windows. And wipe them down everything I'll start driving literally five minutes later the windows will be completely fogged again it's just makes it makes life a little more difficult it makes the windows specifically with the side windows way harder to see you gotta keep wiping them down whenever you're driving and it's cold cold and rainy specifically or cold and snowy hopefully the weather will stay warm and that will no longer be an issue okay I'm right outside a nice long stretch of empty road. I'm going to wait a minute or two for the APS truck to get some distance. But, like I said, unfortunately I don't have enough time to actually go on a back road and really show you where this car is fun. I just want to show you some of the things that I like about driving this car and some things that um, translate over in the spirit of driving that can just generally make this car uh, pleasurable to drive. So, let's get to it. People probably are looking at me like I'm crazy having this thing on my head. On a very nice road, the Miata rides very smooth. This dude is up my ass. I'm sorry, I cannot stand truck drivers. They are so fucking annoying around here. Anyway, the Miata run like rides extremely smooth on smooth roads as any car normally would. However, if you live in a state like Pennsylvania where potholes literally get bigger by the second and the state government has zero intention to fix them, it kind of sucks. Because when you hit a pothole in this thing, I, I don't want to demonstrate it because it's just that horrible. You feel like you're dipping into the Grand Canyon and you're going to emerge with multiple things broken off your car. Like, I definitely need an alignment like in a couple weeks or so or once I know that winter is 100% over. But again, if you bought this car not expecting a stiff ride, like, I don't know what you're doing. Part of the Miata ownership, but doesn't make a difference on your back. So, I'm going to get rid of this asshole. I'm pulling into here, I swear to God, if he follows me. And in the meantime, I'll show you guys the turning radius. Now, this car has a very nice steering ratio, which I'll show you in a second. And that makes turns pretty easy. You can turn around some pretty tight spaces with this thing, and that's very nice to have. I'll do a little pull too. I was short shifting that, but yeah, there's there's no power whatsoever, but again, not the point of this car. 
so the steering, I'm really happy with the steering. It's very responsive, very nice ratio. Now, it's no GTR or anything like that, but for a car from 1991, it's really nice. The brakes are also very nice. They're pretty firm. Again, not supercar performance or anything like that, but they'll, they'll get you stopped. And I imagine these are not the stock brakes because if they were the stock brakes, they would not perform anywhere near as good. And another thing that I really particularly like in this car, and I've mentioned it before in a previous video when I first got it, is that the flywheel is very light. I, I that was a horrible wear match, but I'll demonstrate it again. Yeah, the flywheel is super light. So it makes rev matching very easy, and that's not the best one in the world. I can do better, I promise. But it's very rev happy. It will use all of its power and all of its torque pretty quickly. But you don't really ever feel like you're driving a car that has a totally like gutless engine, even though it is a pretty like gutless engine. But it's just very responsive. I'm gonna roll the window up because I don't know if you can hear me at all. It's very responsive that you don't feel like you really need a lot of power in order to have fun with it. That would have been a nasty pothole. It's hard to put in words, but I'm sure you can probably understand what I'm saying. Um, if you can understand what I'm saying at all, because I don't know if the GoPro is in the case right now. Pedal position is pretty nice. You can definitely heel toe on this. Um, not very good at heel toeing, but once I learned how to do it properly, but, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, I promise once I get a day where I have enough time, I will take this thing out in the back road and do some toge. Like, um, so I got another friend with Miata. He also has a 180SX and my friend with the SST and, and a Honda Civic. You should have some pretty fun times. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap up the video right now because I gotta get home because I'm pretty sure I'm making dinner. Um... And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. I 100% forgot to mention it again. Ow. And that's the gearbox. Oh, and another thing that you can probably tell I don't like about this car is the blind spot. When you're pulling out of an intersection, this gets in the way. But the gearbox. The gearbox is very smooth, very silky. You get a nice notchy click when you're in the gear. Not like a broken kind of notchy click, but like a notchy click like, hey, you're in gear, not a notchy click. Um, it's a little rough when it's cold out or the car's cold start, but when it's warm out and the car's warm, it's silky smooth. Like I, like I just said, like if it's, the car's cold and it's really cold out, you can even have a tough time getting in some gears, like fourth gear is a little temperamental. Once the car is warmed up and the weather is warm, it's smooth as can be. All right, now I'm gonna wrap it up. I just wanted to wanted to get that out of the way because I forgot to mention that in the first video. All right, now I will see you guys in the next video, and now you can have an awesome day.